So shakes and AMVs and mood edits are, in my opinion, what is arguably the one thing that makes an edit from a not so good edit to even to a mediocre to even a good edit. Um, they can be subtle, they can be huge, they can just be, you know, they're their main part, and especially if you're making these types of edits, you can see a lot of like big editors like let's say scout he does his and he does his a certain way he doesn't make it extravagant but he does it he does this very slightly and sometimes if people just watch it they don't really know they can tell what's going on but it's just something subtle and sometimes like you get other editors like i can't name a few but they like it to make it huge i'll show you all the different kinds today and all and the, the ways i do it there i do it in after transitions so if you guys already watched my first part of this tutorial the transition part um i like to do it after those i like to do it in the middle just to if there's an effect there if there's a usually like an 808 or a beat hit i like to do it part of those and i like to make it its own transition so i'll show you all three of those and yeah this is the second time i recorded this because the first recording was atrocious and i didn't find out till hours later so you know if i sound weird then yeah whatever all right so let's go into it so i'm gonna use the same song i did in the preview i did and the same clip so you guys don't really get you know confused and yeah so i'm just gonna show you my preview right now nothing special but with the just little with like simple shakes you can make it you know something decently i already have a transition if you guys want to know how to do a transition watch my other tutorial I have my song in here and I already made markers on where my beat hits are. The way I found those is I pretty much just looked at the waveform right here and you can kind of tell like, okay, something's going on there or you can just listen to it and then mark the beats. So for this first, I'm a hit, uh, I'm a, so for this first shake, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it after the transition. And then the way I want to do it, I want to do it right here when this transition starts. So I'm gonna cut this clip at the end of the marker so it doesn't mess us up. And then the, you know, the um, video effect you wanna use is Shake from Sapphire Shake. Uh, I have, you guys can copy my settings. And now I'm telling you right now, I don't have the best Shake settings. Shakes are totally subjective on the artist and what you want it to look like. You can have it, you know, little and subtle with no motion blur, a lot of motion blur, you know, and it's totally subjective on what you want to do and what fits your edit. Um, since I got a new computer, like I don't have any of my old presets. I just have these ones I made in five minutes, you know, so I'm not saying that they're good and that you should copy them, but you can copy them and they should get you on the right track. It's also like these editors that make these edits, they spend... Uh, they spend hours making their shakes so i can't really give you you know a, a, like the, you just use this use a template it's all you need to like mess with it and find the best one so just so you know okay so i'm gonna drag this on um to my second clip right here right so my this when this clip turns i'm gonna drag this on right here and then these are my settings like i said before um i don't know if you should copy them but you can do you can do it so if we look at the clip now It'll look something like this and super shaky now the reason it ends here is because this clip is cut right here so we don't have to worry about that so now what we want to do is since we don't want it during the whole clip we just want to click this animate button on this amplitude go about seven frames which i like to do set six to seven frames one two three four five six seven and then just bring this down now it's going to look completely different than what it looks before. That's because the keyframes are moving down. So what we're gonna do is, since this isn't like really popping that much, I can bring either the frequency up or the amplitude up. Now the frequency is how, like how much of the shake is going on, and the amplitude is how big of the shake. If that makes sense. So the frequency is look how much shakes, like how many shakes it's doing. That's the frequency. The ab amplitude is like the bigness of the shake. So. I brought up the amplitude all the way up. Let's see what it looks like now. And that's um, decent. I I like it, but I don't really like it. For this. This edit. Yeah, it can work. Um, but I'm gonna change. I'm gonna bring this back down and move the frequency a lot. I'm also gonna bring the motion blur a lot up like that. And I 
think that's more, more of an appropriate shake right there. Um, another thing with these shakes, you can also like a dual effect with them is to bring up the brightness of it. So if you don't have, or if you have Sapphire, right, if you're doing the shakes, what I like to do is I like to do glow, S underscore glow, and then just drag that onto the second clip. And then I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as long as your shake is, keyframe this brightness and then just bring it down. And so if you look at it, the shake now, it's a cool transition shake right there. Um, wait on, let me bring this brightness a little bit down. Okay, that's not nearly enough, okay. And I like the way that looks right there. So the next shake is pretty much a shake in the middle of like, it's not a transition, it's just an effect. And I'm gonna put it right here, right? So it's just gonna add, I think it just adds some things to your, you know, your mood edit. So this time I'm gonna do, if you know Scout, the editor, the way he likes to do his shakes, he likes to do them with not a lot of movement. I mean, there's some movement, but there's not a lot of motion blur and not a lot of blurriness. So I'll try to recreate something like his. But there's no, uh, but I'm not saying any way that my shakes are 100% good. I'm just gonna do something that he does, if that makes sense. So for this one, I'm gonna bring the motion blur all the way down. And, oh, f I forgot one thing. Make sure your tilt shake is off, unless you like it like that. But I hate that. And you can do it, whatever, you know. So, yeah, moving on. Let's look at the shake now. So that's the shake. Looking at it right now, I don't like the frequency. I need it to be more frequent, frequent. I need it to be more fre frequent and less big. So frequency, less big. And you look at it now. And that's something I kind of like, but I'm still iffy on it. I think with also these shakes, like with the bumps in it, like, you know, pan and crop bumps, um, it'll look good. And I'll sh teach you that at the end. So, okay. So, okay, we need to animate this. So amplitude keyframed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, down. It's a little bit, I don't like it. Um, I'm gonna bring the frequency down. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, it's a little bit, like I said before, it's a subtle one, um, which I really don't like. I mean, I kind of do sometimes, but um, it's, it's not my cup of tea. Right, so I'm gonna bring the frequency down a little bit more and the phase down, why not? And then, maybe like that. And like that, and that's something I think Scout does a little bit. If I'm if I'm remembering it wrong, he does it so much better, but I really don't like it, especially for like my type of editing. Um, so I'm gonna add motion blur to it. And even though I think that looks better just because of motion blur. And it's not that big. Yeah, so we're gonna keep that one. And like I said again, we can we can also double affect this with glow. Um, instead of glow, I'm gonna do brightness this time. So I'm just gonna look up brightness and contrast, and just get this brighter one and just drag this down here. Keyframe again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bring that down. Get this and I don't really like that, I usually like the glow, but, you know, just showing you guys another way to do it. Uh, glow. Okay, so that's what we have right now. So, okay, so the next transition, the next transition, the next effect I'm gonna show you the shakes, of how people use shakes, they use it as transitions themselves. So, there will be, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll teach you. So here, let me get, um, a different part of this clip, right? So there's two ways to do it. If you have Sapphire plugins, um, there's a transition in the transitions tab. If you look up shake, it should be dissolve shake. You can just drag that onto your, both your clips, and then the transition will do. It'll just do it by yourself do it by itself and then you can it'll look something like this which is you know it's good 
and sometimes I use it, you know, it's good to use. So it's pretty much just a shake and then the it fades away into this. But I'm gonna show you one way to make your transitions yourself, which is what a lot of people do. So if you watched my tutorial, my first tutorial on how to do transitions, um, it involved like the Z distance and everything. We can pretty much do the same thing with uh, the shake effect. So what we wanna do first is grab your shake effect and then we wanna bring it to your first clip that you want to transition from. You're gonna to wanna to go to the end of it, of end of the clip, make sure this is checked and then just, you're gonna to wanna to keyframe your amplitude right there and then go about one, two, three, four, five, six and then just bring that down. Okay, let me check the front and then make sure you go back to the front and bring this down, that always happens to me. So if you look at it right now, I guess it didn't keyframe. Um, go back to the end and change that. So if you look at the cl clip right now, it starts to shake. Now, um, like what I said about the Z distance, if you go here to the Z dist, make a keyframe at the end as well. And I'm just gonna bring this down. And what this is gonna do is gonna zoom in. So if I bring this down to about 565, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then bring this back to one. It's gonna zoom in. Now that's a little bit too slow for my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to this keyframe right here. You see the Z distance keyframe. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. That's gonna speed it up, but I'm also gonna right click on this end one and just make that fast. So if you look at it now, it's better than it was before. And I'm just gonna make this one fast as well because I don't really like how it's looking. Yeah, and that's better than it was. I'm also gonna bring the amplitude up. No, I'm gonna bring the frequency up because why not? And now, what we want to do is we want to go to the second clip again, and then bring down the preset, kind of. Keyframe the beginning, and key keyframe the beginning of the amplitude, and keyframe the Z distance. Now the Z distance, you're going to want to bring it, you're going to scroll it to the right now, because, you know, since you zoomed in, you're going to want to continue the zoom in, if that makes sense. Um, these are reflections right here. I like to do tile. So if I do tile like this, it'll do like that. Um, but it's all subjective when we want it to look like, so I'll just keep it like this. And then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then just bring this down, and then bring the Z distance back to one. So now, if you look at the whole transition, it should look like, like that. And it's not looking as good as I did it the first time, so I'm gonna mess with the settings a little bit. So I'm gonna go about one, two, three, four, five frames and then start the transition. And then I'm gonna bring the amplitude up. So if we look right now. Okay, that's that's better because it's faster. And then I'm gonna bring the amplitude up on this one. One, two, up. No, maybe, and even just a motion blur up. And then go one, two, three, four, five, and then move the keyframes back to here. And then I'm gonna change the Z distance to fast. So now, if you look at it, it's better. And I think the Z distance is too far away. Yeah, we could just do it like that, and then bring that down to fast. And Cool. And then you can also, like I said before, add the glow effect, which a lot of people like to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bring that down. So cool. So now if we look at the whole thing, from the, the beginning to the end with, with just the one transition, this is what we have now. You know, and it's already 10 times better. And... Oh, what I forgot to do is to add the bumps to it. Um, so, yeah, so we technically don't need a bump on this one since it's zooming in, but we can add one to this one. So let's say you want a bump, right? Um, just click on this pan crop on the first clip right here. And then just hold shift and zoom in a little bit. Right about there. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five frames back. 
and then just put it back to default. And now if you look at this, oh wait, no, we have to go to the second clip right here. And then I think it was two notches we went in. So one, two, go one, two, three, four, five. And then go default. So now if you look at this clip right here, it'll give us a and the bump keyframes are a little bit bad, so I'm gonna go back to the first one and change this to fast to the second one. Change both of these to fast. So if we look at it. And it's decent, I'm gonna change this to slow. No, I'm gonna change this to slow and this to fast. And yeah, it's better than it was before. Um, change this to slow. All right, now I'm just editing. Now. So yeah. And that's the basics of pretty much shakes in mood edits and AMVs. If you like this tutorial, subscribe. Uh, I I put out tutorials in pretty much every program there is, and more mood edits and stuff, and music video tutorials, and everything. So subscribe, like, and comment. And yeah, peace out later.